Good morning. Um, this morning, I'm a few minutes before 10. So we'll see how many people are logging on exactly at 10 o'clock looking for this video. Um, I decided to go ahead and go live as I'm trying to get boys set up um, with all their NTI, uh, mainly because I know it's such a strange time when you just sit watching us. So you're just gonna have to watch me get the kids set up. We just got back from a walk. Trying to take a walk is important. They complain, especially on a cold morning like this, but it's just so good to get outside. Hi, Kim. Here's Walt. Let me see if I can. <laughs> Do you see him in the quilt? Um, yeah, he was super cold. Um, I was pushing him in a stroller. Of course, he complains, which I'm thinking, oh, it would be great if I was pushing the stroller. Um, okay, and here is Collier. Collier, you want to say hi? hi. <laughs> Take Here's James. Um, they are getting set up for schoolwork for the day. We've got choice. Oh, yeah. going to say hi. <laughs> We've got choice boards. Mm. Our life right now is all mm. about choice boards. If you are in JCPS, you know what this means. Star Wars. He's doing so. Star Wars. There's a lot of Star Wars this week in their schoolwork. May the force be with you. That's right. So getting them set up. Sometimes when I work with them in their homework, I am also working on a puzzle. Currently, it's a one on buttons. And yes, we do have a puzzle table in case you're curious. Um, my uh, mother-in-law gave that uh, to me for Christmas, which is great because then if we need to use the table, we just move the puzzle table. Um, puzzles are great for the mind because they're not extremely important, but it's also like something to do. Okay, I'm moving to my office now, my home office. Collier just went in there though. Yeah, you go back in here. I hope you're not getting seasick as I'm walking you around my house, but such is, um, such is the nature of all this. So good morning. Um, it's good to see you. Hi, David and Janie and Vicki. Um, you're a little catty wampus, aren't you? Okay, there we go. That's better. Um, I hope you're well this Wednesday. What day is it? Wednesday. Um, if you're like me, you in some ways have started to get the hang of what all this feels like. And then also, if you're like me, you are on this precipice of trying to think about what life is going to be like um, as we venture out more into the world, if we venture out more in the world and, and all the mental work for that. Um, as you saw in our newsletter, uh, we don't have any idea yet of when, any date when we are beginning our phasing in. Um, we're starting to work on a plan, so that's good. Um, but I imagine if you're engaged in any conversation in your workplace about opening the doors more, that you know that there's a lot of tension in that conversation. There's so much tension in it. And um, we as a staff feel that um, they're hard conversations to have and figure out as we know that there's not full safety until there's a vaccine, um, but that's a long way away. And how do we be safe together? I got the chance to be on an interfaith path to peace dialogue about that yesterday, which was really interesting and good to hear from those um, in the Jewish community and Muslim community and other Christian communities. So anyway, a couple of things to mention before I share what I have to share today. Uh, one is, you know, Anna Holiday, right? Anna Holiday grew up at Highland. Um, she has been at a church in Kansas City. I think that's right. Although now that I'm saying it online, maybe that's not right. Anyway, she has moved back to Louisville and she is planning to move to, I think it's Prague, she and her dog, uh, to teach English. And I say all this because she's making these beautiful woven pieces and selling them to help fund uh, and get ready for that trip. And so if you're curious about that, um, I don't know if Anna watches these things, but she should post something about how. Um, you might uh, support her in that. I uh, uh, sent her a message yesterday that I claimed one of them because they're very pretty. Um, they're very beautiful and it's a way to support her in her next venture. So just a plug for that. Um, okay, a few other things, uh, random hodgepodge of things to name. One is deacon nominations. 
we don't have that many deacon nominations yet. I'm not surprised because this is a time where usually you probably pick it up a piece of paper when you're at worship or on a Wednesday night, you sit and worship and you think about different people you'd want to nominate to be deacons and you're not in that space right now. However, we still need deacon nominations. We are still moving forward in our life as a church. And so the information about that is in our newsletter. Please look at that. Think about who you would want to nominate. Think about who would be a great deacon at this time. Who has reached out to you? Who um, who, who is doing good pastoral care work, who is good at discernment, right? Um, and think about nominating those people. Um, tonight, uh, we have a cloud of witness virtual on a Zoom at 7 p.m. I hope you saw the information about it in the newsletter and will join us. Um, as many of you know, cloud of witnesses is one of the best things that we do. Um, and so I hope you will join us for that at seven tonight. Um, I, I, many of you know, if you are in a school system, it's teacher appreciation week. So I just want to name that we have so many teachers, so many educators, so many administrators in our congregation, and we are grateful for you. You do good work. Um, it is a calling. Um, and we, as parents know that, and we, <laughs> we want to support you. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to name was at the West Louisville Forum um, that is part of Empower West and Simmons today at 11. So in a little less than an hour, um, they're having a Facebook Live that's looking at um, how to advocate for Black America and racial e equity. In this moment, they're going to be talking with John Yarmouth. Um, and so I encourage you to look at that at 11 if you want to. Um, birthdays. It's important. It's Wednesday on Wednesday night at church. We celebrate birthdays. And so I'm going to name the birthdays that began in May and go up until next Tuesday. So I'm also not, I'm going to only say the last, <laughs> did you hear that? James said happy birthday. Uh, the first letter of the last name of kids. Um, so we celebrate Becky Hines, Ray Schnur, Alma V, Alex B.H., David King, Mike McFall, Richard Ryan, Christy Chestnut, Michael Gosser, Jonathan Shippey, John Foster, Elizabeth H., Drew Lehman, Renee Pertlebaugh, Janet Whiteley, Graham H., Jennifer O'Neill, Judy Taylor, Zachary P., Todd Metcalf, Robin Stanton, Kaylee Z., and Brianna Taylor. So happy birthday to all of you folks. Um, uh, okay, so for this morning, um, I wrote something. It's sort of easier for me to sometimes work on processing things that way and then just read it. And I can post a, a link to it afterwards. Um, but I also want you to, na uh, to name for you before I begin into it that um, it does it does deal with a topic that's difficult. It deals with children who are mistreated by adults. And so if you are someone who um, can only really hear and engage and listen about that topic when you have fully prepared yourself for it, um, maybe it's because it happened to you or it happened to someone you love and you need to log off right now and maybe revisit it later or maybe not, whatever it is. Uh, I just want to tell you that beforehand um, because I want um, I want you to feel safe and Someone's calling me. I'm going to decline that call. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're in real life. So um, I want to give you that heads up just so you have um, some agency that if you want to log off that you're able to. Um, and I, I totally honor that and um, respect that. Um, so what I've written is inspired by a book I'm rereading. Have you ever read this? The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzak. Um, I read this years ago. I read it on a Kindle, um, but I'm in a book club that it sent it to me, um, and which is great. I didn't actually own a paper copy of the book. It's been years since I read it, and so I'm rereading it. And um, the main character, Liesel, Liesel, I don't know how you say it, Liesel. You know how you read a book and you never say out loud the characters' names? There's also a movie version, I think, of this. Um, she... Uh, at a young age has lived through a lot. Uh, her brother dies right in front of her. She uh, moves from uh, living with her mother 
um, to living with foster parents and um, uh, is an example of a child who endures, goes through a lot of difficulty at a very young age um, and yet has this resiliency that we see. Um, there's a, a line, page 25. Well, it's also narrated by death, which is a whole other, a whole other thing. Um, talking about Liesl's mother, um, how could that woman walk? How could she move? That's the sort of thing I'll never know or comprehend what humans are capable of. Um, and this book fully looks at that, what humans are capable of, both of um, harm to one another, but also resiliency and that um, endurance and resiliency. So I, I was thinking about this book um, and there's this great part from early on when she is living with her foster parents and she's coming to trust. Well, she's having lots of bad nightmares, which happens um, when you're having to process through a lot of things you can't fully understand. Um, and there's this description of her experience with her foster father, Hans Huberman. So I'm going to read this to you. He came in every night and sat with her. The first couple of times he simply stayed, a stranger to kill the aloneness. A few nights after that, he whispered, shh, I'm here. It's all right. After three weeks, it's done. Can you just um, hang out and do something else? Minecraft videos. You can watch another video, but can you sit, hang out and close the door while I'm doing this? <laughs> hey, can you close the door? Okay. But how do you go around? You can search. I don't know. Can you talk to James about it? And can you close the door? Okay, where was I? A few nights after that, he whispered, shh, I, I'm here, it's all right. After three weeks, he held her. Trust was accumulated quickly, due primarily to the brute strength of the man's gentleness, his bareness. The girl knew from the outset that Hans Huberman would always appear mid-scream and he would not leave. He would always appear mid scream and he would not leave. And then how the author writes, there's this little section right here. It says a definition not found in the dictionary, not leaving an act of trust and love often deciphered by children. So inspired by this, also inspired by the fact that I, I just, I've been thinking so much of in the season about how if you live in a home where everything is stable, then actually your kids are doing great relatively. I mean, this is hard, but they're having time to play. They don't have to scurry around everywhere. But that if you're in a home that's not stable, what a nightmare this is. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about that. And then also our passage from Acts for this um, Sunday is Acts. Um, I think it's from chapter seven, but it's a continuation from chapter six, which is all about Stephen, um, who is described as filled with grace and power. And I, that's been sort of in my mind, uh, um, Stephen filled with grace and power. Of course, the story does not go well with for him. I read it to the kids this morning over breakfast and their eyes were just, <laughs> I mean, it ends with Stephen dying from being stoned. When you read these stories to kids, it kind of, it raises your awareness of all of this. Anyway, okay. So inspired by the book Thief, by thinking about uh, children who are in unsafe situations right now, and also from this idea of being filled with power and grace. This is what I've written. So. To all the Liesels, living through this pandemic with silent suffering and a small hope still burning within you. From the comfort of my home office, I hear the noises of lunch wrapping up. I wrote this yesterday. Daddy just got home from work, carrying one of the kids' favorite lunches from a local restaurant. And the boys squealed when they saw the extra special treat, two lemonades and a Sprite. I can hear them yelling Harry Potter spells at each other from where I sit at my desk. Daddy's been reading the whole Harry Potter series to them while we're quarantining at home. Props to Drew. Their bellies are full. Their pace is energetic. They are safe, warm, free, and know themselves to be loved. I imagine it might delight and pain you to witness this scene. The verbalized love, steady safety, a 
appropriate boundaries, affirmation of self, and challenge to grow. You might be wishing for any of these. You might find yourself pleading for one day where you can breathe free and feel safe. Instead of special drinks of lemonade or a special read aloud of your favorite book, you're hoping for some small miracles. An adult to relent in their steady stream of punishment. A parent to take the night off from numbing their pain with alcohol or pills. A teacher to see the bruises on your shoulders over a Google Meet with your class. A neighbor to hear the screams that are loudest around late afternoon. A sibling to check in on you after a late night visit from the family friend. A mom to reach out to your foster parents to check on how you're doing. I worry about you. I'm angry at the ways adults can so significantly wound the children in their care, the children dependent upon them to be raised and saved. I grieve for you. I'm sad that you don't get to see your favorite teacher who greets you with a smile and affirms your brilliance as you work on reading aloud in class. I weep for you. I'm aware that this is a time of waiting. You're waiting for time to pass, for the next nightmare, for a miracle. I know we tend to think of great adults with public platforms and prophetic voices like Stephen from Acts as people filled with grace and power, but I want you to know that I see you as someone filled with grace and power. I see you as someone worth noticing, knowing, and listening to. You may not receive grace from others. You may receive condemnation, measured love, and manipulative affection. You can only imagine what it would be like to receive unconditional, steady, gentle warmth and never-ending connection. But you are filled with grace because you're enduring the gravest of tra transgressions, but you're still here. You sense deep down that there is a soul within you that is loved, held, and soaked in grace. This persistent voice of self-compassion sustains you over the long nights. Others took from you the power to escape and seek safety. You may feel unable to make a change. It stings the most when an opportunity to get help presents itself, but you don't feel ready to take that first step. The attachment you feel to the adults in your life is too complicated for you to understand right now. But you are filled with power because you are enduring the gravest of transgressions but you're still here. You have developed the capacity to survive, to keep going and persist. You are masterful at resurrecting, a gift that will serve you your whole life long. Standing back up is your superhero power. Filled with grace and power, you are doing great wonders and signs, even if you don't realize it. We know it to be true. You are a beautiful blossom, as in during the harshest of winters, winters. You are vibrant color living amidst an unresolved mess and numbed landscape. You are alive and surrounded, I believe, by a God who deeply loves you and bestows you worthy and of worth and wonder. During this moment of social distance and healthy for some of us at home, I send you love across however many doorsteps, miles and borders needed to reach you as you hide in the closet and practice your deep breaths. I'm taking some deep breaths too, as I write this. Perhaps as we breathe slowly in and out, our souls can connect for a mere moment and you can know I'm rooting for you, child of God filled with grace and power. Maybe I'm making this connection up that we share. Or perhaps God is just mysterious and beautiful and transcendent enough for the bond of love to unite us as one in our breath. Either way, as I breathe deeply, I remember you. And I trust again that God, our God, is by your side, filling you with whatever peace you're able to soak up during these calm moments in the dark. We love you. We are praying for you. Whenever you, whenever we see the chance to appear mid-scream, may we run to you and never leave. 
Amen. That's what I have to share today. Um, I do feel um, the awareness of how alone um, people in fragile situations feel. Um, and I hope that they may sense that we are praying for them, for you, that we are rooting for you. Um, and that ha as Hans Hewerman does to Liesl, that when we do get a chance to hear you mid scream, that we will run to you and never leave you. So I wish you well this Wednesday and I'll see you next week.